it guys, Kim here and you are tuned into Kim E, the Diabetes NP, a place where nurse practitioners can come and improve their diabetes management skills. Now today I am wrapping up on the ominous octet. Last week I did part one. This week is part two, okay? Now if you have not seen my two previous videos like i explained in those videos i want to revisit medications and the mindset that we as nurse practitioners have when we are deciding what medication to use now i think we can all agree that metformin we know that metformin is metformin okay but i've been getting a lot of questions about what about when metformin doesn't work Okay, what about when I have to add another medication? I have to do dual therapy or I have to do triple therapy. Kim, I don't know what to do next. I've gotten lots of questions, messages, things like that. I even did a poll over on my Instagram at the Diabetes MP where I asked that very question and I was blown away at how many people said that very exact thing. What to do when I'm adding multiple medications or metformin doesn't work. So I really wanted to take some time and to really talk about our mindset when we're going about the decision tree as to what would be the right medication to prescribe. And so a couple of weeks back, I did a video over questions and things that you should ask yourself when you're trying to figure out what that next medication would be. Last week, I talked about the ominous octet and basically the ominous octet is the eight defects or dysfunctions that happen within the in different body systems that causes hyperglycemia. And the idea is if you can correct these defects using medications that you can resolve the hyperglycemia. Now, last week I gave you the first four and we're gonna finish off talking about the last four today. But again, like I mentioned last week, the idea, the strategy is to really tackle um, more than one defect. If you can tackle more than one defect and figure out what's going on in that patient's body, if you can, then you will get better results when it comes to um, correcting the hyperglycemia. Before I get into the last four tips, I do want to mention that I have um, a link that I am uh, linking down in the description box of a wait list. Now, I realize that you may have some more questions about medications that need more of a deeper dive and more of a discussion over this. And I'm putting together something that's coming very soon where I'm gonna be talking um, more in depth about medications. Now, you all know if you've been follow following me, you know that I went over about this time last year I went over each individual drug class and each of those videos came with a med sheet, which is part of the MP Diabetes Starter Pack that I created totally free, but it has tons of free resources, cheat sheets and guides in it. And the medication cheat sheets were in that, that they were in, they are in that MP Starter Pack. But I realized that people need more of a deeper dive, okay? And I'm very mindful um, how long my videos are here on YouTube. And so I want to put together like a course or maybe a masterclass where I go more into um, medications. And I realized that this is not everybody. Everybody's not gonna want this. Everybody's not gonna need this, but I'm putting it together and I'm just wanting to see who would be interested. And so I am putting a link in the description box if you wanna get on that wait list. And when it's ready, ready to go live, I will let you know and you'll have first dibs on when it comes out. Okie dokie, so let's get into these last four. This is not gonna take long, but number five, decrease glucose uptake. Now you're gonna particularly see this in the muscles. In a normal glycemic patient, the muscles take back up the glucose so it can be redistributed for the body's use, okay? But in a person that has um, diabetes, someone um, that has this issue, the muscles are not able to take that glucose back up 
which results in hyperglycemia. Number six, there's a dysfunction in the neurotransmitters. Now, this is your brain, okay? Neuro, this is your brain. And so what happens is there's a disruption in your signals and ultimately what it results in is an increase in appetite. So where a medication can be very beneficial here is there are medications that give the signal that you are full. Satiety. I think I said that right. Maybe not. Y'all know I'm from Tennessee, a little bit country, but basically there are medications that can give you a feeling of fullness and all that takes place in the brain. So number six, dysfunction of neurotransmitters and what can happen is correcting that so there is no dysfunction there. Number seven, an increase in hepatic glucose production. Now we know regularly that our liver produces glucose through gluconeogenesis also through glycogenolysis. Hopefully I said that right again. Again, from Tennessee, okay? I'm country, okay? But basically the, uh, the liver makes new glucose molecules, okay? That's a normal thing that the the, the liver does, but in a person that has diabetes, is experiencing hyperglycemia, there is an overproduction, okay? And the body cannot use it at the production that it's coming out as, and then that results in hyperglycemia. Number eight, an increase in glucagon secretion. Now this takes us back to the pancreas, okay? But instead of the beta cells where we know that's where insulin is coming from, we're talking about our alpha cells, okay? Now glucagon and insulin, they're like a harmonious balance. That's what we want them to be. We want them to be in harmony. We want them to be balanced. Now, what glucagon does is it stimulates the production of glucose, okay? And we do need that, okay? We need that in a normal body, we need that. We need to be able, when our blood sugar gets low, we need to have something that stimulates that so we don't have hypoglycemia, right? So that's why I say it's a harmonious balance that we're looking for. But when there is an impairment in insulin secretion, then this mechanism goes unchecked. Okay, and then there's an overproduction of glucose, more than what is needed in the body. So with this defect, there is an increase in glucagon secretion. And so what you would want to do is correct that defect and get that more back in balance. We decrease that uh, elevated, you know, uh, glucagon secretion. Okay, guys, I hope this video was insightful. I hope that it was helpful. I hope that it opened up your mind as to what causes hyperglycemia. And again, if you have not watched my previous two videos, I'm going to link them below. Again, if you're interested in going more into a deeper dive, you feel like you need more of a deeper dive, or you just want to learn more, I'm going to link the wait list um, below. And here coming very soon, I'll be giving more details in the coming weeks, I will let you all know what I'm working on right now. I'm still kind of working out some kinks, trying to figure out the right platform because it won't be on YouTube. It's going to be off of YouTube. So we'll have enough time. And for those who want to take more time with this, we'll have a platform to do that very comfortably and be able to talk. Okay. And be able to really discuss and go into a deeper dive. If you're interested, go ahead and sign up below and I'll let you know when it goes live. Okay. If you have not subscribed already, what are you waiting for? Go ahead, be a part of the family, okay? If you've watched this long, you might as well go ahead and do it. If you're over on Instagram, I'm very active over there at the Diabetes NP. And before I get out of here, I do want to leave you guys with our mantra, okay? Let us never, ever leave a nurse behind. Mm -hmm.